Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Sharon from House of Prayer. I'm here to give you spiritual superiority is not spiritual arrogance. And this was given to Bertha Dude on October 23rd, 1960. <clears throat> spiritual superiority should not be confused with spiritual arrogance. If I guide a person into the truth, if he is taught by my word in order to be a suitable teacher again to his fellow human beings, then he may also confidently endorse his knowledge because it originates from me. And then he can rest assured he will have received the pure truth and that this truth has to be rated higher than human knowledge which was merely intellectually acquired and which, <clears throat> without the working of my spirit, is no guarantee for truth. Hence, one can never speak of spiritual, spiritual arrogance when it concerns advocating the truth from me, which the person receives from me directly then any restraint would be wrong if the opportunity presents itself to inform people of my spiritual knowledge. You just should not cast your pearls before swine, i.e. You should not speak where you clearly recognize my adversary's spirit because the truth will not be recognized there as such, and every conversation will be in vain. But anyone who is taught by my Spirit should also mention the working of my Holy Spirit and frankly and determinately stand up for my word. He will certainly be able to do so, for as soon as he speaks on behalf of me and my kingdom, I myself make use of him and speak through him. And then you really want to be able to say that an arrogant spirit speaks through him. Once a person has been guided into the truth by me, he will also be enlightened himself. He will recognize all correlations and able to speak about them. And if he is sure of the knowledge, truth of the knowledge, because he was taught through the Spirit, then he will also be self-confident and able to refute wrong opinions or provide good clarifications, in which case he cannot be called arrogant. Rather, his spiritual superiority should be recognized and acknowledge the truth he imparts must impress the listener and also give him the inner conviction that it is I myself who speaks to him through a human mouth. And since I know my light bearers, I can also distribute the gifts of the spirit such that they will be valued. For this reason, I choose my own servants and give them the task to pass on the pure truth. And anyone with good intentions will recognize the truth and gratefully accept it. Anyone with good intentions will be brought together with the bearers of truth so that he too should be guided into truth, depending on his will. And you should always remember that I only give my grace unto the humble. They are arrogantly spirited person would never be able to receive a gift of grace from me because only a profoundly humble heart is receptive for it or you would have to discard everything said to you. But after serious examination, you won't be able to do that. Spiritual superiority is the complete certainty of knowing the truth. 
and I expect this from my bearers of light, and they would be unable to confidently uphold the truth from me towards their fellow human beings. It is necessary for light to be brought to people to live in spiritual darkness. It is necessary to illuminate the path of ascent for them. And you humans will not go forward or dark, on dark paths, but will continue to strive towards the abyss. For this reason, I will repeatedly convey light to you. And blessed is he who accepts it. Blessed who takes the path which will be shown to him in the light of truth. Amen. Acts 13.47 For so the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have made you a light for the Gentiles, and that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. Acts 28.31 Proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness, and without hindrance. Amen.